everybody, it's Mariana with Three Peaks Classroom. In today's video, I want to share with you my top five favorite books that I like to read at the beginning of the school year. It doesn't necessarily have to be the very first day of school. These are just the books that I make sure that I read within the first week or two of school because it has a really good sense of community and they have a really good strong message of be who you are and you know, to explore your uniqueness. So the very first story that I do want to recommend to you is a story that I do read on the very first day of school. And that story is called The Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson. I love the story a lot because the message in the story is very beautiful and very clear. And it says to not be afraid to share your story, regardless of how different it might sound to other people around you. And actually, the story starts off really beautifully. And it says, um, there will be times when you walk into a room and there will be no one there that's quite like you, whether that is a physical thing or whether that is an internal thing. You know, it might be your skin, it might be your clothes, it might be just the way that your hair is even curled. And so in this story, Angelina feels very nervous to share her story because the teacher asks like, tell me what you did this summer. And all of her classmates are sharing beautiful stories of travels and adventures that they did. But Angelina is nervous to share her story because she hasn't, she didn't go anywhere this summer. She stayed at home in her apartment, taking care of her little sister. And through the course of the story, she realizes my voice does have value. I do have something to contribute to this conversation. And she says, I didn't go anywhere outside of my apartment this summer, but I did travel the world. And her classmates are kind of like, what's going on? And she was explaining that she read stories with her sister every night that took them to faraway places. And then when she starts opening up, you know, she introduces herself. My name is Angelina. Another kid in the class says, hey, that's my sister's name. And right away, they're starting to find connections. And so I do love to read this story because of there's just an amazing message here that your voice matters, your experiences matter, and everybody has something to share. So some activities that I like to springboard off of this book is to find somebody, you know, the activity where you have to walk around the classroom and find someone who, and it's like maybe find someone who also likes the same food as you or find someone who has a similar name in your family or yada yada. So it's kind of getting to know your classmates, getting walking around, getting up and meeting your classmates. But there also is an opportunity here to do some writing or storytelling about, you know, tell me about an experience that you had that made you feel proud or tell me about an experience that you had that made you feel scared and then making connections with classmates who also have had similar experiences like that. If you have not had a chance to read this book or grab yourself a copy, I highly recommend that you grab The Day You Begin. Again, it doesn't have to be read on the very first day of school. It can be within the first few weeks of school, but it's a wonderful way to open up the doors to sharing amongst your students. All right, the next two books that I have here are actually written by the same author. I love this author very much. And I will share one at a time. This story is called Beautiful Hands by Catherine Otoshi and Brett Baumgarten. Um, I have used this story on the very first day of school and I, I actually do a really fun activity with this book as well. If you're not familiar with this book, it talks about how, what, what kinds of beautiful things are your hands going to do today? And all of the illustrations are made with hand prints. And it's just a way you know, for kids to explore, again, their uniqueness, their individuality, but realizing that they do make a difference and they are valued and they are necessary for the classroom. And that is a word that we introduce very early in the classroom. And we talk about how everybody in our classroom is a necessity. Everybody should be there in our classroom. We rely on everybody in our classroom. And if you are not there, then we have a hole in our classroom. So it's just the illustrations in this story are absolutely breathtaking. The message is super clear. Will you li will you use your hands to lift up the uh, lift up others? What can you use your hands to lift? And sure, some kids will start thinking pragmatically, and they'll start saying, "Oh, I can lift boxes, or I can I can carry something for other people." But the message is so much deeper than that, right? You can lift spirits. So. I love reading the story at the beginning of the school year. And one really fun activity, but you need to be prepared for it, is I buy a giant canvas, a stretched canvas on a frame, and I get paint ready. And after we read the story, then we print our hands on a canvas in any color that the students choose. 
So eventually it'll turn out to be like a big rainbow canvas. And once their hand is dry, then they sign their name on it. And it's just a big class canvas that we have. And then at the end of the year, we raffle it off. Like I draw a name and that student gets the choice of holding on to that canvas if they would like. So beautiful hands is another wonderful story that you can use. Again, doesn't have to be read on the very first day of school. I just have chosen to do that in years previous, but it's a wonderful story about what your hands are capable of doing and what you will be capable of doing in the school year. All right, I probably should have saved this book to the very end because this is my favorite all-time book ever, ever, ever. It is written by the same author as Beautiful Hands, Catherine Otoshi, and that book is called One. When I first heard this story, I was very early in my career and my elementary school that I taught at was across the street from a high school. And one year, the high school uh, drama club, they decided to make a production of this story one. And um, I'll get into the story in a minute. You'll see the, the message in the story. But when the drama production came over to our school and put on their show for our entire school, I knew in that moment I had to buy this book and I have to keep it. It's been so well loved that you probably can't even tell, but the pages are actually starting to kind of fall out. So I have repaired this book many times, but this story has so many messages, but on so many different levels. I have used this story with my pre-kindergarten students and they very clearly understand the message. This story is about bullying and how it only takes one person to stop bullying. It can only take one person to stop bullying. Um, so like I mentioned, the message can be very clear even at a young age, but even as an adult, there are underlying messages that you pick up when you read the story. It's just an incredibly written and illustrated story. So yeah, you can see like my binding is all shot here. So this story is about the color blue and how blue was a very quiet color. I could probably recite this book without even looking at it. And it just talked about how blue loved being blue and everybody loved to be around blue. And you know, Sometimes every once in a while, Blue wished that he could be a little bit more sunny like yellow or bright like green or regal like purple. And so we talk about those are outgoing like orange. But for the most part, Blue just liked being Blue, except when Blue was with Red. And then here enters the bully. And Red was a hothead, you know? And then every time Blue was with Red, Blue would feel bad about being Blue. And so, and it talked about how the other colors, they did not stand up to red. Whenever red said something and no one no one stood up to it, he, he just got bigger, bigger. And then everybody started to feel a little bit blue. Get it? <laughs> Until one came and one was funny. He had different strokes uh, and uh, bold strokes and squared corners looked different. And the message of the story here is that it only takes one person to make a difference. It takes one person to stand up to a bully. It takes one person to make another person feel count. Now, what I absolutely love about this story is that not only does it talk about bullying, but it talks about inclusion. So red's trying to roll over blue and everybody's taking a stand and saying, no, not this time. So now red's feeling very small, but here's the best part. Are you ready? Red is starting to walk away. And one is saying, hey, Red, you can count too. You can be with us. You belong with us too. Even though Red was just being a bully. Well, why was Red being a bully? Because Red was lonely and Red wanted friends. And so that's what I absolutely love about this story is that it includes everybody. It talks about inclusion. It talks about how, you know, people express themselves in different ways. And some of those ways are maybe not that appropriate. So then the message here is that everybody counts. Everybody matters. And then you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and red joined and laughed in the fun. Sometimes it just takes one. Ah, oh, I mean, talk about a beautiful message, beautiful illustrations, really simple to understand and really fun to act out in the classroom too, actually. When I taught this in preschool, I would ask students to pick a color and then I would take a marker and I would draw on their hand, like just a little line and said, okay, you're gonna be orange. And every time orange had a part in the story, I would get them to stand up and act out that part. And I would always be red. 
when I use it in my grade three or my grade four classroom, then I let other students be read as well. So they stand up and they pretend to put on like this big bully size and all that. But what an amazing, amazing story. Really fun to act out and the message is super clear. And again, if you wanted to do like a handprint of it where everybody picks a different color and presses, you could even do fingerprints actually, but if you want to do handprints as well, and just, you know, they make an agreement that everybody counts, everybody belongs. Hands down, my favorite book all time ever. If you do not have a copy, go to your library, borrow a copy, read it. If you love it, buy it because you will not regret having this book in your classroom. Catherine Atoshi actually has two more books kind of in this number series. She has another book called Zero, where Zero's feeling kind of lonely, like Zero doesn't have any value. What can Zero add? You know, when you add Zero, nothing ever happens, nothing changes. And so Zero's feeling quite empty. And it just has a beautiful story about how Zero is an empty, Zero is a window to a whole opportunity of more numbers, more value. So if you add zero to a one, now you become 10. So the book zero is awesome. And then the book two is really fun as well. Anyways, I could talk on and on about Catherine Otoshi and all of her books. Every once in a while, I type in her name to see if she's released any more in the, like, the number series. Um, as far as I know to date, she hasn't released any new ones, but guys, you have to grab this story one you will not regret it. <laughs> All right, the fourth book on my list is a super fun book. It's called Be Who You Are by Todd Parr. I actually use this book as a display book in my classroom for the very first day of school. So when kids walk into my classroom, they see this message very plain and simply. Be who you are. You are welcome in my classroom however you are. However you come, you are always welcome. And Todd Parr, I've had the opportunity to meet Todd Parr in person. We hung out at a conference one time. We had macaroni and cheese and we took pictures in a photo booth. There we go. There's the autograph. <laughs> but Todd Parr is a really fun person to hang out with and I just love his stories. I love his wacky coloring, but his messages are so plain and simple and this book just really needs no explanation. This whole book talks about just be who you are, learn and play and live your own way no matter what anybody says. Just be who you are. It doesn't matter what kind of a family you have. It doesn't matter if you like to eat macaroni and cheese in the bathtub. Just be who you are. And so I highly recommend that you read this story within the first few days or within the first couple weeks of your school year. You will not regret this story. The last story that I have to recommend to you, definitely you must read within the first couple weeks of school. And it's probably a story that you have not yet read to your students. This is a story that I recommend for students that are in upper elementary, so grades three to six, just because of the phrasing and the wording in this book, it's a little bit more advanced, which lends itself to some fantastic vocab vocabulary conversations. The story that I'm referring to is called If I Never Ever Endeavor, <laughs> and it's uh, written by Holly Mead. And this story is written in a poetic structure, which is fantastic to revisit when you talk about poetry in your class. But this story does a wonderful job of talking about if you never endeavor, if you never, kind of like Scaredy Squirrel, if you never leave the nut tree, you never know what you're capable of or you never know what kind of a world is out there. And so this story, I even have it bookmarked here. I have a couple pages I wanted to read. On the one wing, I could try and find that I flap and I fail. Flounder and plummet look foolish and fail. But on the other wing, I could try and take flight. Rise high and float free, sail through the trees. And so you can even see right there in the middle of the story, the bird is trying to decide, should I endeavor? Should I try and fly? If I did endeavor and I found my wings clever, I could see the world or I could get lost in it. So it's a quick, it's always a back and forth conversation in its head. My nest is so nice that the nicest of nests, who needs to fly ever? I think I'll forget about this endeavor. But then the story ends with the bird endeavoring and meeting a friend. So again, probably a book that you haven't read at the beginning of the school year, but it's such a beautiful story, a beautiful tale of how, you know, this school year, you should not be afraid to endeavor to try new things, whether that is something in the classroom, whether that is making a new friend, whether that's trying out for a different school, 
group, like a sports team or a drama club or music uh, group as well. This book does a wonderful job of encouraging students to kind of go out of their comfort zone and try an endeavor in a new way. So there you go. Those are my five book recommendations that I have for you for the very first few weeks of school. Now, you can always read um, the favorites like First Day Jitters. I have my copy handy here or a letter to your a letter from your teacher on the first day of school. Or I was just recommended a new book the other day by my daughter's kindergarten teacher. And that was school's first day of school and how the school like the building is really nervous about welcoming new students and making sure that, you know, the school does a good job of being a school. And so many there's just so many awesome books out there. But these are the five tried and true books that I have in my classroom that you will see me read to my students some point at some point between the beginning of the school year and the next like two or three weeks. So I really hope you enjoyed my book recommendation. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. I like to come up with a weekly video on my channel every Sunday here. I talk about book recommendations. I go over the curriculum. I go um, about tips and tricks on classroom management or time management assessments my favorite games to play with your kids. I talk about it all. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys are having a wonderful start of the school year and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.